seriously, what purpose do those buttons serve? There's something to pop off if they need to. Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> anyway, welcome to episode three of Layman's Guide to Whiskey with Max and Adam. That's Max. I'm That's Adam. Adam. And what are we talking about this time, Max? Ah, stolen whiskey. I actually really like this brand. Um, you know what? Partly just simply because they're open about it, what they do. They don't make it themselves. It's stolen. Fantastic. It's an LDI product. What is LDI, Max? Actually, a product out of Indiana. They make a lot of the whiskeys that you see on the back bar, but a lot of people are very secretive about it and don't like to talk about it. Stolen is a great one that likes to, hey, this is what we do. This is who we are. And then they do something very unique and make that product their own. And I love that about it. Uh, it is a very unique product on that back bar. And nothing else is like it. Yeah. Uh a lot of the craft whiskeys that you've seen over the past years have actually come out of a place called LDI slash MGP, a Midwest Grain Products in Indiana. This is actually an old Seagram's distillery. Right. Uh, Seagram's Whiskey, uh, as a company, went uh, under in the late 90s, uh, due in part to them uh, investing heavily in uh, the Hollywood film industry. Well, so we, we can okay. actually thank the fact that we have such great products, again, like Four Roses, uh, which is part of that Seagram's umbrella that was being not treated well due to the collapse of Seagram's because of Hollywood. So we here on the West Coast are ruining things constantly. Um, no truth in the rumor it was porn. Maybe. <laughs> but one of the great things about the Seagram system was they really trained uh, uh, distillers well. It was a factory setup that was all about creating uh, high-end distillates that were being blended into things and being used for various purposes. So they had a lot of uh, capability, a lot of training to learn how to do different things. So when people were starting to look for uh, new things to use for their new brand that has a 200-year-old story despite only a three-year-old trademark, they went to LDI MGP. slash MGP and bought old whiskey because uh, it was a lot of it left around. Now they don't have so much of the old stuff anymore, and they're distilling new things, and it's still coming from that same spot. Often. So, Stolen, again, one of the brands that's very open about it. It is not a bourbon. Open about that, too. It's 100% corn whiskey, and it has been aged 11 years. Now, wait, Max, I thought bourbon was corn whiskey. Yes, but there's other specifications that it does not meet. Thanks for remembering. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a big fan of corn whiskey in general, but being from the South, it's because somebody's you know uncle made it and you brought it in a jar. Stuff over the counter, I haven't really been a huge fan of. It's just not the same. This is the first 100% corn whiskey that I really like because they do something unique with it. So, they age it 11 years, but in used casks. Now, that's one reason why it's not bourbon. But it does allow it to just kind of sit and mellow and open up. And I think that works great with the roundness of the corn that's naturally going to be there. They do one other thing to it that's one more, yeah, month-ish with these smoked staves mm -hmm. where they just – basically you're taking used barrels. Uh, you take the staves apart, smoke them, drop them in. You actually got to do that maker's mark, which is yeah. brilliant. Uh one of the things that people have been doing to try to add extra flavor or change around the traditional flavor profile of American whiskey, because those barrel laws are often very constrictive, is using some sort of extra oak staving or extra oak aging by smaller staves that are dropped in the barrel and age inside. It's also a way or for some cask. people. Some people are trying to cheat the system. They're trying to make something that tastes older faster. Because there's one thing that you can't cheat on whiskey, and that's age. Time, Time. in the barrel. Uh, so, having said that, by the way, I want you to notice Adam has the fancy glass, and for me, you're lucky I'm using a glass. I was just going to get you a straw. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So, first up, on the nose, it smells like corn whiskey, and there's Dude, definitely corn that whiskey. smoke there. It's oily, round, corny. Cream corn. Hmm. See, I, I love that there's just a little something else going on. Now, is it your most refined sipping whiskey? Well, there's definitely a huge barrel presence going on here. That extra right. oak is definitely taking up a bit. But not overdone. Scene. Well, I mean... It, I don't get the huge vanillas. I don't get that huge oakiness. It's just mellowed. It's mellow, but it's also 
like liquid oak almost. At least for me. So what's happening well, here some is part of that comes from the smoke. It definitely comes from the smoke, but it's also corn on its own doesn't have much to stand up against. And right. this is a used barrel that's being thrown in with a very heavy finishing thing. So what I'm getting a lot of is upfront sweetness finished off with uh, a smoke and a heavy oak that just kind of coats along the back of the palate. What I like about that is you get that roundness from the corn, but then as it finishes, it actually finishes fairly dry because of all that wood. Uh, it's definitely And I like very, that very little dry. nice little spiciness at the end. I, I think for... For something that, for me, you know, is a very moderately priced whiskey, I think it's dead solid. And I'm not going to be mad if my friends come over and drink it all. You have friends? Two. Oh, great. Well, relatives. <laughs> that being said, I, there, you're right. There's nothing wrong with this whiskey. Mm. It is exactly what it says on the label. It's doing exactly what they're, they're claiming that it does. Uh, is it as romantic? No. But... In romance. a world where romance is being oversold versus a product inside of it, I can absolutely see why this is sitting on your back bar. Yeah, I like this guy. Cool. So if you liked hearing us talk, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, and if you want to read more things, then instead of listening to me talk, you can go to baldandbondla.com and read several things I wrote about whiskey. Or come see me on Whiskey Tuesdays at Chestnut Club, Santa Monica. I feel like there's a better alliteration for a whiskey day. Than a Whiskey Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Uh, whiskey Sundays, but that's at my uh, house. Great. Doesn't wear <laughs> pants then. <laughs> Not wearing pants now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>